Hi, now we're going to do a more complicated example. Sarah likes to keep the investments in her RRSP, that's a registered retirement savings program, in a ratio of one to three to two in cash bonds and stocks. Last year, she invested $12,000 in total. How did she invest her initial $12,000? First, this is a ratio problem. We have cash, let's switch colors, to bonds, to stocks, is equal to the ratio of one to three to two. That means that our total is $12,000 which is going to be in how many parts? It's going to be six parts, one plus three plus two. We add those together to get the total number of parts. So each part is going to be $2,000 because $2,000 times six equals $12,000. So we start with $12,000. I'm going to do our initial percentage as a fraction instead of as a percent. Cash is going to be one over six. Bonds are going to be three over six and stocks are going to be two over six. When we add those up together, they add up to six over six or a hundred percent. I've already said that one part is $2,000. So I'm gonna fill that in here. Three parts then is going to be three times $2,000, which is $6,000. And finally, two parts is going to be two times $2,000 is $4,000. When I add those up together and try them, they do add up to $12,000. Over the year, her cash investments rose by 3%, her bonds by 8%, and her stocks lowered by 2%. That means she lost money. What was her profit or loss over the year? For part B, we're gonna look at percent change. So start with 3%. So percent change is always done by the old value times one plus the change I'm going to call that R equals the new value. So for cash, we end up with $2,000, one plus 0 0.03 equals 2,000 times 1.03, which is $2,060. That's today's value. Another way to do that would be to find the interest. That would just be that $2,000 times 0 0.03, which is $60. So we would put $60 in here. For bonds, let's do the interest instead of the total. We'll end up with $6,000 times 0 0.08, that's 8%. And that gives us $480. So I put that in there, which means that I have a total of $6,480. Finally, stocks is a loss. That's okay. We can just still multiply $4,000 times negative 0 0.02, which gives us a negative number. That negative number is 80. So she lost $80. To show how the stocks would look like when we do the total, or the new value, we would say $4,000 times one minus 0 0.02, which is going to be $3,920. Minus $80, giving us a total of $460 worth of interest. 60 plus 480 minus 80, giving us now a total 
of 12,460 or 12,000 plus 460. Now we get to part C, the final and more difficult part. The problem with this is that now we have more money, but her money is no longer evenly balanced. Because Sarah lost money in stocks, she doesn't have a ratio of 132 anymore. When she invests her 2540, she's going to add that to the $12,460 she already has, giving her a total of $15,000. So her new total is $15,000. That's how much money she has in total with last year's $12,460 plus her this year's $2,540. So what we're gonna do now is do the same thing we did before and break that into parts. So this is six parts is 15,000. That means that one part is going to be equal to $2,500. And I'm going to do that math. So one part over six parts is equal to something over $15,000. When we cross multiply, we get X equals $15,000 divided by six. And then we get that, it is $2,500. That means that Sarah wants to have $2,500 in cash, meaning she needs to invest an additional 440 which is 2,500 minus 2,060. She's going to invest an extra $440 in cash. For bonds, we have three parts is going to be 2,500 times three. Or if you prefer this, it's going to be $15,000 times that ratio of 3 sixths. It doesn't matter which way we do it, we still get $7,500. And stocks, we're gonna take that 2,500 times two and end up with $5,000. We check, when we add those together, 2,500 plus 7,500 plus 5,000, it actually does equal $15,000. Let's finish our differences. Subtraction tells us we need to invest $1,020 in bonds and more money, $1,080 in stocks. I'm actually going to check and add those together and not surprisingly, it still adds up to 2,540. So once Sarah invests her money this way, she will end up with an evenly balanced portfolio.